This is the second part of the clock assembly video. I will be describing the assembly of the gears into the frame, how, how to assemble the pendulum bob, the, the escapement, how, how to make the clock become operational, and how to set the beat, and final tuning to get an accurate clock. Next comes the, the pallet and pendulum support. Um, the pendulum support uses two shaft collars under the pendulum support, and there are two more shaft collars onto the pallet. There's a, a hole, there are two holes in the pallet and two holes in the pendulum support, so you need to line the screws up on the shaft collars. I like to use longer screws. In this case, I use a um, large socket head screw. It just a lot. It's a lot easier to adjust the, you know, to tighten it. This is a good time to test the bearings um, by assembling the the pallet and and the pendulum. That starts by inserting the arbor into the back of pendulum support. The back of the arbor should be flush with the, the shaft collars. Insert the, the pendulum support through the back of the frame. Drop a bearing onto the arbor and wiggle it into position. The pallet is going to go on like this. There are two spacers. The large spacer goes on first, then the, the pallet slides on, and then the longer, narrower spacer goes on next. Place the second small bearing on, and then the front frame should be able to drop into position. And line up the bearing. Take a couple of screws and lock them into position. You know, lock the hold the frame in position. Might not really need to do this at this point, but it certainly doesn't hurt to test that the frame can go together. And if you notice right now the, the pallet and the pendulum support are completely free uh, I'm not really tightening these screws very tight yet. Just enough to keep stuff so they move together. Hang the clock on a screw on the wall. The, the screw should be just the right distance so that if you pull down on the clock, you don't notice any sagging. If the screw's sticking out too long, it doesn't actually support the, the hanger, the hanging hook very well and the, the clock may sag, you don't want that. So tighten the screw so that you are just the, exactly the right distance. You can put the pendulum through the back of the pendulum support and it just kind of hangs in place. And notice if I pull the pendulum to one side and release, it swings with no noticeable change in amplitude it should continue swinging uh, for about yeah, at least 10 minutes, and then you'll still see a, a slight um, drop in amplitude. Might be a good point of time to take the swing gauge into position, and that way you can use it to measure the pendulum amplitude. Pull the pendulum to one side and release it, 
and you should be able to watch the amplitude will slowly degrade over time. It takes a few minutes for the amplitude to be reduced by 50%. It takes another few minutes for it to reduce another 50%. So after about at least 10 minutes, the, clock, the pendulum should still be swinging slightly. Uh, if you go uh, um, much shorter than that, it's telling you that your bearings have too much friction. Make sure to remove any grease. Make sure the seals are taken out. If you need to add some uh, dry Teflon lubricant. The final component to assemble before putting the gears into the clock is the weight shell. I'm using the large weight shell, which will be filled with BBs instead of lead shot. Uh, BBs are not as dense as straight lead, so it takes the larger weight shell and takes almost two jars of 6,000 BBs. I'll start by assembling a bearing into the weight shell pulley that will drop into position and then I try to line stuff up a little bit down the hole put the pin into position and using a drywall screw just kind of wiggle it around until you'll feel when the screw drops into place and then you can tighten it down. The bearing should allow the, the pulley to spin easily. So now we're going to open the jars of BBs and just pour them on you. Let's see how, wow. It's always a good idea to plug the holes, especially if you're filling these, the weight shell with lead shot. Drop the screws into the holes so nothing falls in there while you're filling the weight shell. I'm going to add a cardboard tray so that if I fill this, if I spill any, the BBs don't go everywhere. One down. I'm going to go ahead and fill this all the way to the top to get as much weight in here as I think will fit. Give them a little shake to try to settle a few more in. Looks like I can get a, just a couple more. I'm going to call that full. Drop the, the bottom cover into place. After, they'll, they'll compress into position when they tighten the screws. If you were filling a, the weight shell with lead, it would be a good idea to wear rubber gloves and wash everything when you're done. You don't want to get lead all over the place. If you decide to use BBs, they're pretty safe, just steel and copper. I'm not too worried about getting copper on my fingers. Whereas I would definitely be more careful if this, if I was filling the, the smaller weight shell with lead.
And that is the completed weight shell. We've got a, a scale to see how much it weighs. Comes in at 137 ounces, which is a little more than eight and a half pounds. Should be more than enough to run this clock. So now I'm going to remove, remove the clock from the wall and take the frame apart so I can start adding the gears. I'm going to go ahead and take the, the pallet out until I assemble the rest of the gears. I think it just makes the assembly a little bit easier. The first gear to add is the minute hand assembly. It goes right into the hole right in the center of the clock. The next assembly is the ratchet, gear 7, and that has the larger diameter arbor, actually the same diameter arbor as the minute hand arbor, so there's only one place that that can go, right here should be able to test that things spin easily. Next we will add gears 2 and 3. So I will just go ahead and add the arbors into position there. Gear 2 is the one with it's the shortest um, distance, you know, it's a fairly short gear that drops onto the arbor and so as the the ratchet spins gear two you know everything spins with it there is a spacer on the top side of the gear next we will add gear three and that's the one with a little bit longer hub on it because it needs to be tall enough to clear gear two. That drops into position and again everything spins. It's tall enough that it's getting a little bit wobbly. That will clear itself when we add the front frame. Add the spacer. Next comes the escapement add the arbor into position the escapement drops into position and another small spacer goes on the top we can add the winding drum in gear 8 first we need to add a large bearing into the hole at the bottom. Add gear 8. That lines up with the ratchet. The final arbor for, uh, I believe I call that one gear 6 or 7. Uh, that one's labeled gear 7. The spacer has to go on first and then the gear goes into position and these two um, gears will align. We can add the minute hand and actually that's the hour hand and those will 
all align with each other. There is a spacer with a large hole that goes over the the winding drum. Uh, I guess we can put the pallet back into position. Starting with the pendulum support. The large diameter miscellaneous spacer with the small end pointed towards the bearing to make sure that there's no friction. Drop the pallet into place and then the remaining spacer. The bearing stayed behind so I can drop this into place. And lining up the front frame at this point is a little bit tricky because now there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arbors and three support posts, actually eight arbors and three support posts that all need to be lined up. So just start with start by lining up the the main winding drum arbor and the minute hand arbor. Get that into position and place one, you know, at least one of the support columns into position. And then just one by one, wiggle the remaining arbors until they drop into position. Uh, we're down to, let's see. Once everything falls into place, the front frame will drop into position. And then you can add the two screws from the sides. And the one remaining screw at the top of the frame. That is pretty much the completed clock. Let's, we can go ahead and add the hands, drop the hour hand into position. The, the minute hand is keyed, so it can only go in one direction. I'm going to go ahead and line them up. And then I should be able to turn the minute hand and see that the, the hour hand rotates with it. Now before we get ready to hang the weight shell we need to we need to tie a knot in the in the cord. I like to leave it a little bit long. It's easier to wind um, or to pass through the weight weight shell. So I just Tie a simple overhand knot. And then pull it snug. So I am going to hang this on the wall and then test the clock. Hanging the clock on the screw and trying to make it relatively um, level, I will then hang the pendulum through the back and it just goes into position onto the pendulum support and drops into place. And I, I'm going to set the beat later, uh, but once the pendulum is in position, I can go ahead and add the weight shell. The weight shell gets added by passing the, the end of the, the cord through the pulley 
and around the pulley on the weight shell and dropping the end of the loop over the hook. And that should be enough that when I move the pendulum to the side, the clock should start ticking. Now, I haven't set the beat yet, so what I'm going to do next is I will move the pendulum to one side and watch where the clock ticks. Move it to the other side and watch where it ticks. Uh, I can actually use the swing gauge to, to check. It's about one and a half degrees to the right. And it's about two degrees to the left. I'm going to adjust it just a little bit and go ahead and tighten some of the screws to hold things into position. Right now, the clock is ticking. I'm going to go back to the top where you can see the, the escapement. And we now have a working clock. I can put the winding key in and wind the clock and set the hook back into position. And there we now have a fully functional assembled clock. I still need to adjust the beat slightly. I can, I can see how far the, the pallet goes into the escapement on one side versus the other. So I'm going to just gently encourage it to go a little bit to be more balanced. There is a working clock. The, the next step, I will let the clock run for a few days and then start adjusting the, the finial at the bottom to change the length of the, of the pendulum so I can set the beat of the clock.